into reclaimed water and sludge. Every year, sewage treatment plants produce millions of tons of sludge that is settled out from sewage wastewater. In North America, we have many names for sludge. Solid waste, sewage compost, nutricake, black gold, or biosolids. The name we use depends on what we do with the sludge. But for Laura Orlando, it is what it is. It was considered a hazardous waste for a very long time until the Part 503 rules um, were written and it was recast as a um, beneficial, non-hazardous substance. Sewage treatment was never meant to clean. It was never meant to purify. It was never meant to result in products that were safe and beneficial and, and um, somehow uh, sanitized and, and chemical free mm -hmm. that could then be reintegrated into the nutrient cycles. Mm -hmm. Never started out that way and nor is it possible to make it that way. We end up in a treatment process with a very dangerous material that most unfortunately we are now putting into life cycles, putting on land. We want to reuse the nutrients in our human and food wastes. The treatment process, however, does not succeed in eliminating the pathogens in human waste. We also know that sludge contains an unknown and vast array of chemical wastes. The pressure is on to dispose of sludge. Whatever it's made of, it has to go somewhere. Almost half of the sludge produced is applied to farmland. In many cases, it is free of charge to the farmer. It is touted as a soil conditioner, but no one really knows what's in it. Several forms of wastes find their way onto our productive farmland under the guise of fertilizer. Among them, pulp and paper sludges, raw septic waste, as well as sewage sludge. Not long after moving to rural Ontario, Maureen Riley experienced the situation firsthand. Forced into activism, she now pioneers the anti-sludge movement in Canada. I found out that they were planning on putting 5,000 tons of paper mill sludge residue all in these fields where the cattle graze all around the house on all three sides. And I thought, I've never heard of such a thing, that they would take industrial waste and just put it on the top of pasture land. And I didn't think that the chemicals that would be in that waste would be good for the cattle, and I certainly didn't think anyone would want to come to a bed and breakfast where there was industrial waste around the house. So I started to ask some questions. I made some phone calls, and I didn't like the answers I was getting. People were very evasive. Um, uh, the Ministry of Agriculture didn't want to talk about it. The, you know, there were, there were a lot of uh, very dodgy answers around what the chemicals in the sludge would be. It's a combination of chemicals, heavy metals, materials uh, that, that may be contaminated and may be dangerous or may not be. But the problem is, no one's testing that before they bring it out to the countryside. He, he, the farmer doesn't know what's in that truck. And maybe there is no farmer. Maybe the waste hauler owns that field. And then no one's really looking. So it was really, though, when the, I'd asked some questions and then the waste hauler came knocking on my door here after dark one night to, uh, to tell me really what would happen to me if I didn't uh, stop asking questions that I, I really knew that the management of these wastes out in the countryside were quite out of control. Maureen Riley was contacted by a local farm family subject to a different form of sewage waste disposal. Each year, hundreds of millions of liters of raw, untreated, untested septage is being deposited on farmland. Septage is human and household wastes pumped from individual septic tanks.
Farmers Terry Bodeway and her husband Tim find themselves at the mercy of the growing drive to dispose of sewage waste on productive Canadian farmland. Their neighbor receives raw septic waste. People can't comprehend that sewage waste is being dumped on farmland. I mean, you drive, you drive past these farms, you would never imagine that. Neighbors aren't notified when, um, when you, they're going to be dumping sewage on land. Okay, like we didn't know that this was going to be happening. Um, they don't make they don't make anyone around the area aware of what's happening. All year, he's in. Doesn't matter whether it's raining. Doesn't matter whether it's snowing. Doesn't matter what. He just he comes in and he dumps. How often does he come? Anywhere from once to four or five times a day. Mm -hmm. Times a day. Mm -hmm. And they've told me at the ministry, this is what I say to them, I say, you know what, he's been in, he comes in at least once a day, up to five times a day. So I'm sort of questioning where is, where is it coming from? And no one will, an no one will answer me. And this has that. been going on how long? Two years, a little over two years. The gentleman who lives um, across from us over here, you would have gone past his house on your way over. He um, had his water tested and it's come back with um, contaminated with E. coli contamination. Mm -hmm. And it said sewage, sewage contamination is what it said. In the neighboring fields, Maureen Riley takes a closer look. There's a possibility that they could be growing. Well, they could grow. They could grow crops for human consumption on this field. I don't think I'd want to eat vegetables grown on here. We don't know what was in those pump outs, What kind of toxic uh, cleaning fluids, and could be almost anything. Do you know that the waste industry wants to come out and put their industrial waste on these fields?